Hi everybody, Mr. Gerhardt here, and uh, we're going to go over a couple of the proofs that we did in class today, and uh, so you have some idea of what's going on, and kind of give you a little, hopefully a little positive incentive as to what's going, uh, how to solve these and, and prove them. Now, the first one that I want to take a look at is number three, and you can see number three right here. Um, and I just want to show you what I did first, and it's not necessarily the best way to go about doing it. Um, you can see this is kind of a mess, and the reason it's a mess is I didn't even follow my own directions because one of my first steps that I always tell you to do is to change things into sines and cosines, and I didn't do that. And so what I would suggest is that you put things in sines and cosines, and that's going to make it a lot easier. So I'm going to redo this problem, and I'm going to show you what happens when you put it in sines and cosines and how that will work out. And then we're also going to do number seven as well. So <clears throat> I'm going to put this on a separate sheet of paper here. And you can see that we got 1 minus sine of x over 1 plus sine of x equals secant of x minus tangent of x quantity squared. Now the first thing I'm going to do is follow my own directions this time. And I'm going to put secant as 1 over cosine. And I'm going to put tangent as 1 over, or as sine of x over cosine of x. Again, I keep the squared out there because that's what happens. Um, I have common denominators, so what's going to happen now is I can say 1 minus sine of x all over cosine of x. And this is quantity squared. Now, I can square the top and square the bottom. I can distribute over division. And so that would give me 1 minus sine x quantity squared over cosine squared x. But here's where the tricky part comes in. A lot of people are going to want to distribute this. So it's 1 squared minus sine squared. And that's not allowed. What we can do is we can write it as 1 minus sine x over one, or times 1 minus sine x. The bottom being cosine squared x, I know that sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. That's a Pythagorean identity. But what I can also do is I could say subtract sine squared x from both sides and get cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. And I'm going to do that, and we're going to see why here in a second. So we're going to write that out as 1 minus sine squared x. Now, some of you might say, well, that doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense right now. But 1 is a perfect square. Sine squared is a perfect square. And so what I can do is I can factor that. And so the top is still 1 minus sine x times 1 minus sine x. The bottom is 1 minus sine x times 1 plus sine x. And if you notice, now... Things, since things are factored, I can cancel those. And when I cancel those, I get 1 minus sine x over 1 plus sine x, which is exactly what I had on the left side to begin with. And so that is proved. So there's an easier way to do it than what I did before. Now, what I did before... I didn't follow my own rules. I didn't put things into sines and cosines. And I eventually did, but I had to foil and factor and foil and factor when I already had it factored to begin with. So I would stick with this and make sure that you follow your own rules. Okay? We're also going to do number seven. And again, just to show you, I did number seven in class. I did it three different ways. You can see this way, I said, well, that kind of sucks. And then I said this way, and I said, well, that didn't work. And then I said, oh, well, this is an easier way to do it, so I'm going to do it this way. Now, don't get discouraged because it took me three chances to do it, but do understand that it's going to take a little bit of time and practice to get used to these. And it's been a year since I've done them, and so you guys are going to have some of the difficulties as well. Now, with this one, I'm going to work both the left side and the right side. And I'm going to try and get these so that we can factor and, and break it down so that we can cancel things out. And so that's what we're going to do first. Right here, we have sine of x plus cosine of x quantity squared. So I'm going to write it out as sine of x plus cosine of x. And I'm going to write over here sine of x plus cosine of x. So that's the top. 
And then the bottom is sine squared minus cosine squared. Well, sine squared minus cosine squared, that's our difference of perfect squares. So I can write it as sine of x plus cosine of x and sine of x minus cosine of x. That's simply factoring the difference of squares. And the nice thing now is I can cancel the sine of x plus cosine of x on top and bottom, and I have sine of x plus cosine of x over sine of x minus cosine of x. Now, I said I was going to work both sides, so I'm going to try and stay true to that. If I look at the top of the right, I got sine squared minus cosine squared, difference of perfect squares. So we're going to write sine of x minus cosine of x and sine of x plus cosine of x over, this is sine of x minus cosine of x quantity squared. So that's sine of x minus cosine of x written twice. And again, I have things that cancel. And now I just have sine of x plus cosine of x over sine of x minus cosine of x. And so in essentially two steps, I've proved this uh, trig proof. And it's really a matter of trying to break it down so that things are factored. And once things are factored, I'm good to go. So I hope this helped. And uh, good luck on your three problems. And we're going to work some more during block day in proving these uh, different trig proofs.